Dorothea Lang was born on May 26, 1895, to a second-generation German-American middle-class family in Hoboken, New Jersey. At seven years old, she was stricken with polio. Doctors did not know how to treat the disease, and she was left with a weak foot and a limp for the rest of her life. The only self-portrait she ever took was of her foot. Lang attended public school in Manhattan, but frequently skipped classes to wander the Lower East Side, drawn to how the poor, middle class, and rich lived. She studied photography at New York City's Columbia University prior to the First World War, and following her graduation, moved to San Francisco in 1919, where she made her living as a portrait photographer. By age 26, Lang was the most popular portrait photographer in the city. The stock market crashed in the fall of 1929 and plunged the country into a depression that lasted for a decade. Almost 13 million Americans were left jobless. Lang was drawn to the plight of the unemployed and homeless, venturing outside her studio to take her first documentary photograph in 1934 of men in a soup line with the caption, White Angel Breadline. Her photographic studies of the homeless and unemployed caught the attention of local photographers and eventually led her to employment with the Farm Security Administration. With the FSA, she documented the conditions of sharecroppers, migrant workers, and displaced farmers. Lang's photographs humanized the impact of the Depression in the lives of everyday Americans, breaking down the wall between viewer and reality. Her famous photo, Migrant Mother, is the most enduring images from this era. With her camera, Lang was able to bolster support for the establishment of migrant camps in California. Though she died in October of 1965, her photographs continue to connect generations far removed from the Depression's devastation with the humanity of those who lived it. The ability to humanize her subjects is a trait shared by the 2012 Living Legacy Award winner, Annie Leibovitz. Annie was born in Waterbury, Connecticut in 1949. Three generations of her family had lived in Western Connecticut, but Annie's father was in the Air Force, and his job took him to military bases all over the country. Annie and her five siblings had a peripatetic childhood. Annie began taking pictures in 1968 when she bought her first camera during a trip to visit her parents at Clark Air Base in the Philippines. Two years later, while she was still a college student in San Francisco, some of her photographs were published in Rolling Stone. By 1973, Annie was Rolling Stone's chief photographer. She was 23 years old. Annie had started out as a photojournalist working with reporters like Hunter Thompson and Tom Wolfe, but she soon developed a distinctive style of portraiture, largely because of the demands of the magazine cover. By the time she was barely 30, her pictures were readily identifiable and influential. In 1983, Annie joined the staff of Vanity Fair. She has worked at Vanity Fair and then Vogue ever since. Her portraits of actors, directors, writers, musicians, dancers, athletes, and political and business figures, as well as her fashion photographs, still life work, and reportage, both speak to a broad audience and demonstrate a versatile and relentless talent. Besides her magazine work, Annie has created advertising campaigns and developed 10 books. She considers her books her most definitive work. In 1999, she and Susan Sontag collaborated on the book Women, a collection of photographs that were exhibited at the Corcoran Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and the International Center of Photography in New York. For over 40 years, Annie has been creating a wide-ranging communal portrait of contemporary life. Her unique ability to capture the public significance, as well as the personal essence of her subjects, has contributed to our understanding of the world.